Start the damn show! Hello and welcome to another episode of Beard of Magic Podcast, Game Podcast, where my co-host is fucking yelling at me and I'm scared, send help. Ah! Ah! Okay. So anyway, hi. Welcome to episode 43 of the Beard of Banter Podcast, the gaming podcast where Bones is already being a fucking walnut. Yeah, why don't you off yourself? I mean, no one would complain. No one would be sad. Everyone would be happy. Like, thank God she's finally dead. Anyway, I'm your host, the period of one, and with me is my co-host, Bones. I'm dead now. Oh, yeah. With me is my former co-host, Dead Corpse. And, um, welcome to the show. Welcome to this week's podcast. It's gonna be a hoot and a holler. Everyone's gonna have a ton of fun. Don't, don't listen to her. Don't listen to the rotting body over here. We're gonna have a ton of fun talking about video games. Bones, how you doing? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so let's get shit rolling. Uh, if you're not familiar with our show format, we usually have uh, approximately half an hour of general gaming discussion, and then after that we go into some gaming-related news stories from the past week, and we share our opinions on that. So Bones, dead body, are you ready? Nah. Don't do it! Sorry. All right, general discussion starts now. Bones... What have we been playing lately? Uh, nothing. I've been on vacation. Yeah, we've been on vacation for like the last week, so we haven't been really playing all that much. I've all... been playing nothing. Um, excuse me. Yes, you have. What did I play? A little game known as Pokemon Go. Yeah, barely. It still counts. You still played it. There was like no Wi-Fi. Yeah, we, we, we went on vacation, and everywhere we went, there was no reliable Wi-Fi, so... Any chance we did get, though, you were on Pokemon Go to see... I caught a Weedle on a lady's head. She caught a Weedle in a McDonald's. Yeah, that was cool. It was fun. It was cool. I wasn't expecting there to be Pokemon in the McDonald's. In Pennsylvania. On the lady's head, for that matter. Yeah. Fuck, man. I guess. And then we went outside, and there was a horsey, but someone else caught it. Yeah, bitch! It was someone on our bus, too. I think so. Yeah. She was a bitch. Yeah, a fucking bitch caught the horse, and we're like, oh, damn it. But then there was, uh, Arena showed up, and I'm like, we got to go catch it, and you're like, no food. Yeah. That's pretty much what happened. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of Pokestops on our way. Yeah, there were tons like, of there. them. So I collected a lot of like eggs and stuff that I'm hoping to be able to hatch once I get back into school and I'm walking around campus all the time. Yeah. Yeah, we we because like you have to walk a certain amount of kilometers to hatch eggs. Like some are two, some are five, some are more than that. Yeah, we even talked about that. Um, you know, going to university, being on campus—that's a great place to be catching Pokemon. Yeah, they'll, I heard they'll a, probably a, be all over yeah, the place. Yeah, I heard a lot of uh, the university campuses, uh, particularly in the states, not necessarily here because it wasn't out yet here. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the campuses in the states are pretty Pokestop and gym heavy. So. Yeah. I'm hoping that our campus will the be... The Odette building will be a gym. Wouldn't that be funny? I but guarantee fucking to you. I hope that our campus is pretty uh, Pokemon Go friendly. Populated with Pokemon? Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Because, like, you're walking all over the place. Yeah, you walk... I'm going to be on campus, like, every single day. Yeah, you walk from so... building to building anyway, so yeah. you might as well catch some Pokemon on the way. Mm -hmm. it will be nice. Yeah. it will be nice to see how much I walk, too, because it kind of measures yeah. how much you walk based on, like, how many... Um, like eggs you can hatch mm -hmm. is determined by how much you walk, so yeah. be interesting. Yeah, might get in shape. <laughs> Go s running around finding Pokemon. No. no, probably no. not. If you weren't even willing to leave the house to go catch Pokemon, I highly doubt that. I was one of those lazy po people who put out Pokemon yeah. lures. Yeah, the the like the, a few days <laughs> to get Pokemon. Yeah, here. a few days before we left for vacation, you downloaded it yeah. here at the house. It's actually released in Canada now. Yeah, it's officially yeah. released in Canada now. But you had you pretty much cheated the system and changed your phone over to the U.S. App Store so you could get it. Yeah, and um, you downloaded it here at home, and you were like. I think there's a Pokemon somewhere outside. And I'm like, well, why don't you go catch? And she's like, no, I'm lazy. I can't do that. But they give you Pokemon lures. And then you, and then you threw out a lure and you, you're you just like... Immediately. Like, I, I love how Nintendo developed this game with the mindset of having people, you know, go outside and explore the world and get exercise. And then you're that lazy bastard who's just like, I don't have time for that. I'm just going to lure them all to my living room. 
I can catch Pokemon on my couch. Yeah, you know what? Don't go How many there Pidgeys with me. did you bring to the living room? Uh, like how many did I wait? I'm gonna go on and see how many I caught. You caught have, quite like, a few Pidgeys, actually. I have like at least four Pidgeys. And they were all in the freaking living room. I know it was funny. And then you caught one Weedle in the McDonald's in Pennsylvania. I caught a Caterpie. Here. Here, yeah, in the living room, I think. Not outside where you should have been. No, I should have been outside. But you know what? The problem with, like, where we live is because we're in, like, a suburb, there's not actually, like, there's no poker stops out here and stuff. You don't know that. So you, t- you haven't gone outside to check. It'll tell you if there's poker stops nearby. Yeah, nearby. You haven't traveled far enough out to see if That's there are That's what I any. mean. I'd have to leave the subdivision. That's the point. I don't want to. That's leave the this. point, man. I don't want to leave the subdivision. I'll fight you right I'll now fight. on the on the show. I will fight you. Let's see, Pokemon. I have two Pidgeys, two Rattatas, a Weedle, a Caterpie, and a Charmander. Wow. Charmander was my starter. I also have nine eggs. Do you have any idea what kind of Pokemon eggs those are? No, it's just like they all look identical. It just like there's different amounts that you have to walk to hatch them, but they have to be in an incubator to hatch them. Huh. Yeah. This game's complex. It is. And how many Pokemon can you catch? Like how many Pokemon are in this game? 250. Okay. So yeah. I'm assuming the original 151 and then and then some. Yeah, and then some. But yeah, that's Mainly what we've been basically this week. it because I've been on vacation, so I haven't other had, than like, that, access to my uh, Xbox or anything. Other than that, well, we brought our 3ds's. Yeah, but I barely played. Mine. You you didn't touch yours really. You touched it like once, and you didn't even play anything. Yeah. I every now and then, like on the bus while we were out in the city or just at the hotel room, I was playing Shovel Knight yeah. on my 3ds because everyone knows Shovel Knight's a fantastic game. And if you don't, there's something wrong with you <laughs> because because Shovel Knight. Who boy. boy? Have we ever talked about Shovel Knight on the podcast I before? I don't think we I actually don't have. recall that we have. Well, if we haven't, we are now. And um, go buy it if you haven't. It's yeah. been out for like two fucking years. What's your excuse at this point? It's a pretty fucking good game. It's been out for two years and it's on every freaking console known to man. You have no excuse at this yeah, point. Yeah, we got the, the Amiibo so we can play co-op on the Wii. Yeah, I bought this game three times. Yeah, you're a sad piece of shit. <laughs> Oh, shut up. Yo, you are a sad piece You of bought Mass Effect 3 and then the Collector's Edition, and then you were contemplating getting the Trilogy Pack. You so know, you know what? You can't judge me. You, you can't. Can. No. Yeah, I can. Stop judging me. Because I traded in Mass Effect 3 after I got the Collector's Edition. You still so. bought it twice. Whatever, man. And Whatever. you bought that one full price, too, so don't Whatever, even fucking man. judge me. Whatever. Don't go there with you wanna me. You want to fucking go I'll with me? I'll fucking fight you. You want to fight I'll me fight on Shovel mother. Knight Street Pass I'll Arena? I'll fight everybody. Because my ghost will kick your ass. <laughs> I'm alert. <laughs> I almost I'm allergic to I'm allergic to your bullshit. Okay, anyway. But yeah, Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight's a fantastic game. It's one of the best games I've ever played. I'm not even joking. It's pretty fucking good. And um I bought it three times. I don't regret my decisions. Your bank account does. <laughs> nah, shut up. <laughs> but um no. When I got my 3DS initially, which was like at the end of 2014, that's where I bought it the first time because it was on 3DS, and that's when I initially played it, and I loved it. Uh, and then they released it on Xbox One, and I bought it then because not only was it a console version I could play on my TV, but it also had Battletoads in it. So hey, it's pretty great. And then we bought a physical copy for the Wii U and the Amiibo because the Amiibo came out so we could play co-op. So we bought it. A Wii U version. I don't regret that. You probably regret that because of your bank account. <laughs> I was even contemplating buying a copy on the PS3 Holy too. Fuck. Because it has Kratos in it. And I'm like, well, I gotta fight Kratos. Wow. Shut up. I love this game. It's fucking great. It's one of the best games I've ever played in my life. I'm not even, I'm not even exaggerating there. A lot of people would probably agree with me. You wouldn't. Even though you had fun. You started playing it on your own. 
Yeah, and, and then you I died. died, so I stopped playing it because it's not fun when you die. What about no, no, you're right. I was gonna say Dark Souls, and I'm like, what am I talking about? Dark Souls. Dark Souls is not fun. It's not fun when you. Oh die. my god, it's not fun. Dark Souls is fun. It's that kind of fun where you fucking hate yourself, but you're still having a good time. <laughs> you know when you play a game and it's like you know so... when you hate yourself, but you're still enjoying yourself. No, you know when you play a game and it's like balls to the walls, excruciatingly difficult, but for some reason you're still enjoying it because you're a fucking sadistic asshole. No. Yeah. That's Dark Souls in a nutshell. Oh, God. Okay. Because you're like, you're constantly dying and it's fucking hard as shit. But I keep going back to it. Uh, no, thank you. I think I played once and I died in the first, like, ten minutes or twenty minutes. Apparently, I hate myself. And I never went back. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that. You played the first one on the 360 and and I... I immediately died. No, I had gotten it from a friend... Like, that was my friend's copy that he gave to me because he was getting rid of a bunch of his Xbox games. So I brought that home, and I hadn't played it yet. You played it before me, and then you were like, so I played Dark Souls, and I'm like, oh, really? What was it like? And I think you were like, I died in the first ten minutes. I got killed by a skeleton. I don't want to play it anymore. Yeah, and I actually never played it again. No. I played it. And then you got the second one. For a good few hours. And then I got the second one. Played that for a while. You played quite a bit of that. Still can't get past that part. That I'm at though. Yeah, with the fucking big. The ass. fucking the giant sword dudes. Yeah. yeah. Which is weird because it's it's gonna be outdated at this point. But a while ago, I can't remember how long ago though, I recorded footage for a virtual rampage episode of Dark Souls Two. Oh god. And in that recording, I had gotten past that part to the boss that was in that area. But I couldn't beat the boss. And then you died. And I died. Which, now that I've, now that I've mentioned it, just to let you know, that's not coming out. That virtual <laughs> rampage isn't coming out <laughs> because it's old. I'm just going to scrap it at this point. And you died. And I died. And you died. Yeah. But yeah, Shovel Knight isn't that hard. Shovel Knight's a lot like Mega Man. It's, it's like hard. Mega Man difficulty. To you, it's hard. Mega Man was hard. Yes, Mega Man is hard. Mega Man's hard. Shovel Knight is not as hard as Mega Man. Mm. But mm. it's it, it took a lot of influence from Mega Man, so... Mm. Yeah. Mm. When we played it together, you had fun. We played through the whole game in one night. Yeah, but I also, how many times did I die and I, steal I your know. life? And I never, ever, ever, ever Paid won a level. What? <laughs> You never paid me back for stealing my life. No. I fucking dare you. <laughs> I will pour this, co- pour no, this coke don't, on your don't face. Do it. No, mine. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah. That's all we've been really playing this past week because we haven't been at home. Been on vacation. Other than that, like before that, I was playing Overwatch. I was playing Metal Gear Rising. Again. Again. Because like, it's third fucking time. great. Fuck you. I'll fight you. You started playing actual Metal Gear. Actual Metal, yeah, that was um. That was an interesting. That was about experience. a week. It was about a week before we left for vacation. Um, we we talked about it on a previous uh, episode of the podcast that we got the Metal Gear Solid HD collection. Yes. Started playing that, and then we we're like, "Well, what what game should we play first? And I was like, "Let's just do let's just go chronologically." So we started with MGS three Snake Eater. Yes. That was an interesting experience. Played the game for about two hours. I'm pretty sure half of that was cutscene. Yeah, ninety percent of it was cutscene. Because yeah. uh, it's like I finished playing it that night, and it was like two hours in. We were like, and "Wow, I'm two sh- hours!" And I was like, "I think how much did I actually play? actually only played like for half an hour?" Yeah. But then again, I ex- but... I expected that because of what I've. Again, we should clarify: never played an actual Metal Game Gear. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Never played an actual Metal Gear game before. Wow, a Metal Game Gear. The only the only Metal Gear games we had played before that, I played Rising, and we both played a little bit of Ground Zeroes. Other than that... Yeah, and I got my ass kicked because I'm not good at stalling. Other than that, never played Metal Gear before. So we started with MGS3, and we knew what to expect because of everything that we've heard. Is yeah. The cutscenes are really long and drawn out, and it's more like a movie it's than an actual game. It's basically like a cinematic... Experience. But I wasn't expecting it to be that drawn out with 
cinematics. I kind of was, just because... And you know what sucked? Kojima. I went to the extras menu, and there were those movies, right? And I watched both back to back. And that was like maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. Yeah, because we, I... we thought it was like... The stuff in the the menu was just for like background. And, yeah, like, backstory. If you watched and... it beforehand, like you'd understand like where you were starting out. No, they played that for you in game yeah, as well. Fuck! <laughs> I watched both back to back, and like twenty minute, twenty five minutes later, it was done. And I'm like, okay. And then we started cool. the game. And then started the actual game, and they played them again, and I couldn't skip them. <laughs> and it's like, fuck. <laughs> it's a good game though. Good game. What I well, the, the, when I actually played the game itself, it was actually pretty great. Well, I think mean, pretty fun. If you think about it, like if you're getting into a Kojima game, it's gonna be more of a cinematic experience than an actual like playing the game experience. What about Zone of the Enders? I don't know. You don't even know what that is. No, I don't. I've, I've never played it. Zone so. of the Enders. Was I know a game. that's a game, but it was made by uh, Kojima Productions, and it was um, it was around the time MGS2 came out. On the PS2. It was about, like, giant Gundam mechs fighting each other. Nice. Sounds fun. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, I and know. And when fucking you... Death Stranded comes out, it's gonna be, like, 90% it's gonna a be... movie about, like, really fucked up things happening to Norman Reedus, and you're gonna play the actual game for, like, two yeah. hours. Yeah, the first, like, hour of the game is going to be Norman Reedus giving birth to the Sand Baby. Sand Baby. Sand Baby. <laughs> Which is both not in use and like Sand Baby. Sand Baby. I'm so looking forward to Sand Baby. We need a PS4 for Sand Baby though. I know. I don't have any Eventu- money. Eventually. I'm going to Europe next year. Eventually. I have no money. Anyway. Um But yeah. What were we talking about? Oh yeah. What games we played. Yeah, but what, before we left, I was playing Metal Gear Rising again because the game's fucking amazing. Fuck you. I was playing um, Overwatch. You were playing Overwatch, and I was surprised you weren't playing Overwatch when you woke up this morning. Because you had been away for so long. I'm just very tired. And so. there's a new there's a new hero out, man. I know, but is she like do you have to pay or No, she's she... free. Oh, thank God. No, they I said... wasn't sure if she was paid DLC. No, I saw a bunch of articles about uh, them releasing this new car- uh, hero, Anna, um, and they said that all future heroes will be free. Oh, fantastic! Because I was like leery about downloading her because I didn't know if she was going to be like paid DLC or if she was going to be free. No, she's coming out with like a free update. Nice. And I think she's already out at this point. I think she is. She probably too. go on there to check. Yeah. After we're done here. I was just like so exhausted. All I wanted to do was like lay on the couch and watch TV. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, before we left, I was playing some uh, PS3 games that we had gotten, like Adventure Time. Oh, fuck yeah, Adventure Time, we were playing that. Yeah, we were playing... I went out a couple weeks ago at this point. It was the day when uh, Joe Riley and I recorded last week's podcast. Right. We went out, and I got some games. I think I, I think we talked about it in that uh, episode, but I, I'm not exactly sure. Um, got a few Adventure Time games for the PS3. Adventure Time, explore the dungeon, because I don't know... Which is a great title. Yeah. And uh, The Secret of the Nameless Kingdom, which is basically a Link to the Past clone. Mm-hmm. Was a pretty good one. They're pretty good games, yeah. actually. Like, like, um, they're not bad. Explore the Dungeon is like a dungeon crawler, like roguelike game. Where you just go through yeah. different levels of a dungeon fighting uh, monsters and stuff. And it's actually pretty fun. It's pretty fun. There's it's some... a four-player co-op, yeah. too. So you and I played it together. Yeah. It was pretty fun. It's pretty, uh, you know cool yeah the vo- like i like that you know all the voice yeah. acting and everything yeah they got all it's the... totally like in line with what would happen in a fucking adventure time episode yeah uh it was made by way forward yeah which they have a good track record they mm-hmm. made the uh, ducktales remastered yeah. they made shantae they made uh mighty switch force mm-hmm. they made a lot of good games um and they also made the Secret of the Nameless Kingdom, the Link to the Past yeah. clone, which it's literally Link to the Past, but Adventure Time. It's pretty freaking good, yeah. though. Like, I got through the first dungeon. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And it, it was pretty fun. It was frustrating at times because the controls are a little slippery sometimes, and mm-hmm. some of the puzzles were a little... So, some th- so a few things were a bit confusing, like how you defeat the freaking spiky hedgehog. Dudes. Oh, yeah. Because you have to hit them and they turn into a ball and then you have to bop them with your shield to flip them over. And then you have to hit and them. And then again. you have yeah. to hit them. So, the, you know, a few things like that were kind of confusing, but I got the hang of it. Yeah. So it was pretty good. Mm-hmm. 
What else and, um, did we get? Shadows of the Damned. I started playing oh, that. Yeah. It's How, a Suda that 51 like? game. Do you know who Suda51 is? I recognize the name, but... Suda51 is... Well, obviously, it's like uh, an alias, but his last name is Suda. But he's a Japanese game designer, and he's known for making games like um, Space Channel 5, uh, Lollipop Chainsaw... Um, oh, Lollipop Chainsaw. Uh, no More Heroes. He made No More Heroes on the Wii. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And... um. Yeah, he made Shadows of the Damned, Suda Fifty One game, and it's it's pretty cool. I liked it. Yeah, it's like um, it re- the, when you started playing it, it reminded me a lot of The Darkness, honestly. Really? It like looked really similar. No, I think I gave you the box and you read the back of it. I'm like, no, this but sounds... even when you were playing it, it kind of looked similar. Yeah, but I gave you the box and you read like the summary on the back, and you're like. Bro, this sounds exactly like The Darkness. And then I read it, and it's like, <laughs> Garcia Hotspur needs to save his uh, long-lost love from the depths of hell or something. And I'm like, yeah, God, not really? Kind of, though. Because what happened in The Darkness was you just had supernatural powers, and your girlfriend was kidnapped by the mafia. Yeah, but same thing. Demonic mafia. Not really. They were just normal dudes. No, they were totally demonic. They were normal Don't dudes. Don't tell me these things. And then you ended up with Nazi Germany, which was cool. Yeah, you. Uh, the, yeah, the darkness was cool. You ended up in like an alternate uh, World War One Germany. Yeah. <laughs> that, was pretty, that game was fucking freaky as hell. Um, but yeah, uh, the Shadows of the Dam. It was pretty good. Like, um, it's a third-person shooter action game, and it controls a lot like a Resident Evil game. Like, it's really tank-like in uh, the way your character moves, and the aiming is really reminiscent of a Resident Evil. Oh, where you, you know how, like, most shooters, like, when you aim your gun, your whole character moves with the cursor? Yeah. In that game, only your gun moves and you stand still, like Resident Evil. It's so, like, only your gun moves to where you aim, and then your character stays stationary, and then you just pop oh, people off. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, but it's really weird and over the top, and hey, I like those kinds of games, so I had fun with it. Yeah. I got through the first chapter, worth of levels. Oh, that's not bad. It was fun. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. And cool. uh, Steve Bloom voices uh, Garcia Hotspur. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. But Interesting. He, 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 he tries to be Spanish, and sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> because it's just like, why is Wolverine trying to be Spanish? <laughs> But yeah, uh, played that. Had fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. 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 It's good. It's good game. Oh, oh god, okay. Yeah, um... What else did you get? Dragon Ball games. Fucking Dragon Ball. <laughs> I got a couple other Dragon Ball games for 360. Uh, One's pretty great. The other is okay. Oh. You yeah. played both of them? Yeah, I played oh. both of them. Which one's just... Eh. Um, Raging Blast. Oh. It's okay, but... Eh. It's a little too complicated for its own good. Oh. But um, Ultimate Tenkaichi, the other one, is pretty good because it's like, it's pretty much, I want to say they're the same engine, but I'm not sure, but they like control similarly, but the uh, Ultimate Tenkaichi is way less complicated, it's easier to control, and it has an actual story mode. Oh, so you can actually Because R- R- Raging Blast, it doesn't have an actual story mode, it just has like character missions that you go through. Oh. And um, with this one, it actually has a story mode that like retells the events of Dragon Ball Z. Oh, cool. And there's an overworld that you can explore oh, in yeah. like the Dragon kind of Ball like, world. Uh, universe. Yeah, a little bit, but it's like the actual Dragon Ball world. Oh, it's and you just can... like a hub world? Yeah, instead of like a hub world somewhere, it's like the actual world they live in and you can like fly around it. Where are you going? Uh, apparently, she's going to uh, procure an animal in the middle of the podcast. We apologize for the inconvenience. Um, this is my puppy. They can't see the puppy. This is my puppy. Why do you have the puppy? I have a puppy. Why do you have the puppy? He's my puppy. What? Hello, Dexter. Why do you have the puppy? Because he's my puppy. All right. I think that's uh, a good time to wrap up this general discussion. I don't think there's anything else you want to talk about. I have a puppy. All right, then. All right, so that wraps up our general discussion portion of this episode. We're going to move into some news stories now. So, Bones, are you ready? Yeah, what's their newsies? Of- um, there's a few things. There's a few things to talk about. 
let's start off with some um, confirmed games coming to some consoles. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know Rise of the Tomb Raider? Oh, yeah. It finally has a PS4 release date. Mm-hmm. As uh, reported by EGM, Rise of the Tomb Raider finally coming to PS4. Rise of the Tomb Raider may already be out on Xbox One and PC, but PlayStation gamers have had to patiently wait to spelunk his lore croft. However, a recent link has hinted that the game may launch this fall. According to a listing on GameStop Italy, Rise of the Tomb Raider for PS4 will be available on October 11th, monthly, roughly a month before the previously assumed launch date. While the listing was taken down quickly, it wasn't before a user could snap a screenshot of the post along with a price point reflective of a new release uh, game, 70 euros in Italy, which is basically new game price here. Uh, whether or not it's the actual price of the game... 70 euros is actually like $100. Really? Yeah. Oh, well. Canadian, anyway. I don't know about American. Whether or not this is the actual price of the game is uncertain, as many times initial postings use placeholder art and text. Perhaps the game will include uh, DLC? We'll have to see. Uh, initial speculation placed Rise of the Tomb Raider's release in November, as Microsoft's timed exclusive was for a year, and the game debuted on the Xbox One in November 2015. Right. Uh, it is a currently available for Xbox One and PC because it was a Xbox console exclusive. Right. But it was only time. There was a lot of controversy when that game was coming out that, oh, Microsoft had procured the rights to it, and it was an Xbox One exclusive. It would never come to PS4. But then they came out and said, no, it's only timed. It'll right. come out for PS4 yeah. eventually. Yeah. And now, according to this leak, we might be getting it for PS4 in October. What do you think about that? Well, I don't care. I don't have a PS4, and I already have it for I already Xbox have the One, game, so... so... Yeah, I was one good of the, for you, I guess, if you have a PS4. I was one of those. I was one of those people that was kind of in the middle. I didn't really care because I had an Xbox One. We could play the game when it came out. But I was like, kind of sucks for the PS4 people though. But who cares about them? I don't have a PS4. Wow, so insensitive. What if someone came up to you and be like, "Man, it's great you like Mass Effect. It's a shame I don't give a shit," and then walked away. I wouldn't care because <laughs> I like Mass Effect, so. What if someone came up to you and been like, hey, bro, that's an Xbox box. It'd be a shame if someone smashed it with a hammer. And then they smashed it with a hammer. Why would they do that? Why would they be in my house? Because people are assholes. Dexter would and, bite them. And also, they're breaking and entering. My tiny dog would bite them. Call the th- uh, I th- Call the thops. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. The thops? So, yeah. What are those? Um, the thought cops? Presi- yeah, sure. Presumably October... For PS4 Rise of Tomb Raider. That's cool. cool I mean, yes. I already have it, so yeah. it doesn't affect me, but it's cool that it's finally coming out for them. Moving on, speaking of PS4, um, the original Dead Rising has been confirmed to be releasing on the PS4. Again, good for them. Why do I care? Article states! <laughs> Good news for Dead Rising fans out there, Capcom has confirmed that the humorous zombie action game will be coming not only to the PlayStation 4, but also Xbox One and PC. That's right, the original Dead Rising is coming to all relevant consoles. Sorry, will you? <laughs> Gamers will once again be able to visit the Willamette Parkview Mall during the height of the holiday shopping season for some good old-fashioned zombie slang. Additionally, both Dead Rising 2 and Dead Rising 2 Off the Record will also be coming to PS4 and Xbox One. Bringing these classics back for new systems is a perfect way to ramp up the excitement for this winter's Dead Rising 4. No release dates have been announced for any of the re-releases. So, what do you think? Cool, I guess. I don't know. I, I didn't. It. I didn't honestly care that much for the. Is original it gonna Dead go Rising. backwards compatible? Because I had it on 360. I don't know. They're just saying it's getting uh, a re-release. Cause I guess that's kind of cool. Cause um, four is coming out at the end of the year, yeah. and four is taking you back to the mall. To the mall with Frank with West Frank. and everything. So I mean, like, it's kind of cool that they're doing that to like kind of hype it up. And they're also releasing Dead and- Rising two and the. Standalone. Yeah. So, like, if you didn't play the original Dead Rising, you can now you can play it. And... Yeah, because the original Dead Rising was only on the 360. Right. Exactly. But so then like, when they released Dead Rising Two, it was on both yeah. 360 and PS3. So now you can play it. You can get all hyped up for Four because Four is going to take. Four is coming right back. out in December. Yeah. So. And this is this is the first time the original's been on a Sony console, actually. Yeah. 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 So. It's pretty cool. I didn't care that much for the original Dead Rising, so I'm not really that interested. It was, it was fun, you know. I just thought it, um, it, it definitely felt like a first in a franchise, you know, like it hadn't yeah, fully been fleshed was, out yet. Yeah, if you, pl- I didn't play that much of it because it kind of got repetitive and boring. Mm-hmm. But 
I mean, it's cool. Yeah. I guess if you were excited for Dead Rising 4 and you want to play the first one. Yeah. Cool. I mean, it's a perfect time to re-release them. Yeah, exactly. Considering so. that 4 is going back into the original yeah. um, locale and everything. Yeah, so. so good on you, man. Yeah. 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 Anyway, moving on. Oh, football. So, you know. Oh. I don't know. So, you know uh, Telltale? Oh, yeah, the first fucking Batman trailer came out today. Did it? Yeah. Oh, that's not what I was um. Oh, no, about. they released the first Batman trailer. For... I was talking about the fact that there is a uh, release date announced. For? For the Batman Telltale series. Oh, probably from the trailer. <laughs> Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment and Telltale Games have announced a worldwide distribution agreement for Batman and The Walking Dead Season 3. The first episode of Batman will be released digitally for Xbox One, PS4, Xbox 360, PS3, PC, iOS, and Android in August. Following this, a season pass disc will be released at retail on September 13th, including the first episode access and all access to subsequent episodes as they are released. Telltale has a stellar reputation for delivering quality content based on world-renowned properties, and these games make a great addition to our lineup. We previously worked with Telltale on The Wolf Among Us, and now the recently really announced Batman, so we are very pleased to expand our partnership with worldwide retail distribution of these upcoming titles. The third season of The Walking Dead begins this fall and tells the story of a mysterious newcomer, Javier. Javier. A, 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 Javier. Ja, Javier, yeah. I think it's as well as Javier. the continuing story of Clementine. Yeah, right. she's like fucking like she's 16 like 16, now. 16, 17 now. But yeah, um, the first episode of Batman comes out in August, which is on it, it, That's what I said. I assumed it would come out sometime in August because mm-hmm. they said the first episode would be out in the summer, and then the whole thing would be done by the end of the year. So I thought they start in they August. They have to start in August. Yeah, they start in August. They do it monthly, and then they finish in December. So. Now that's confirmed. This is basically what they're doing. And there's a retail uh, season pass disc coming out in September, which is what they did for uh, Minecraft Story Mode 2. Mm-hmm. They released like a season pass disc. So what do you think? Do you care? Cool, but where the fuck is Wolf Among Us Season 2? I'm telling you, they're probably not going to do it. Ah, that was like my favorite Telltale one. Yeah, it was the, it was the best one. Yeah. I mean, I really, Walking Dead I really was great. I like The Walking Dead... Um, I played the Game of Thrones one. It wasn't that great, personally. It wasn't that How many great. episodes did you play, though? I played four. Oh, okay. I bought all of them, but I only played, like, four of them, and I was not... Eh, it was okay. Um, mostly because it was, like, you were following the story of a family that wasn't really part of the actual... Oh, okay. Like, it, it was some, It was... So they went off in their own direction? Yeah, they, they put a focus on people who weren't focused on, like, in the actual, like, in the show or in yeah. the, the books and everything, so I, like, didn't really have any, like, emotional attachment to any of them. Mm-hmm. They threw in, like, main characters every so often, but... Eh. Um... <laughs> eh. Minecraft story mode was meh. Oh, um, Batman Telltale series debuts August 2nd. Nice. That's the c- confirmed official release date is but August like, 2nd. Honestly, The Wolf Among Us was my favorite Telltale series mm-hmm. or Telltale thing. Yeah. And I'm like really upset that they've like never said anything about doing a season two because they left it on a fucking Tales from the Borderlands was really fucking good though. Yeah, you Tales said from the that Borderlands they, like, was really good. fucking good. But uh they left Wolf Among Us on kind of like yeah. a cliffhanger kind of thing, and okay. I'm so upset. Yeah, they have Batman coming out. Yeah. Uh, Walking Dead season three is coming out this year. Yep. Next year they have an untitled Marvel series, yeah, which I ties into the that, MCU, yeah. and then they've confirmed a game, a second season of Game of Thrones, but yeah. nothing about Wolf Among Us. I want it. And Wolf Among Us came out three years ago. Yeah, already. I know. I'm so, so upset. That was the best honest, one. I I've, honestly, I like honestly, I played through that whole thing. It was, I think, five episodes. It was five episodes. I played through that whole thing like four times. It was so fucking it was, good. It was. It was pretty great. But yeah, nothing about Wolf Among Us season Big two. B I honestly don't fave. think they're gonna do it at this point. <sighs> and if they do, it's gonna be like way down the road because they got so many other things coming up. Fuck off, Telltale. Because they got well, they got Walking Dead season three. They got this Batman thing. They got a freaking Marvel series coming out. I know a second season of Game of Thrones. Like, I just I don't know. I'm just. Really I want them good. to do another season of Tales from the Borderlands. Because fuck that well, shit yeah, was good. Yeah, you said that was good, and I I sat there while you were playing it, and I thought that was pretty good. I don't even like Borderlands, but I think I would have. They did. A, that. They did a good job with that. But but then fuck. again, they worked directly with Gearbox on that. So. Wolf Among Us. 
Where is it? You know what you could do, though? You could read the comics because it was based on yeah, fables. Yeah, I know. So you could read the comics if you I wanted. I did download them. Yeah, so why don't you read the comics? Uh, but it's not the same. Read the fucking comics, man. Anyway, moving on uh, before Bones gets uh, depressed and shoots herself in the face. Uh, there's a lot of stuff about Microsoft this week. There's like three stories about Microsoft. We're going to get to those at the end, though. Oh. Um. Next up, we got a story about Nintendo. I don't know if you heard about this, oh, but the fucking... classic NES is back. And it's tiny and adorable. Oh, that's not what I was going to say. Also, did the Xbox turn on? The Xbox just turned on. Great. Um. No, what I was going to say was Nintendo's stock, since they released Pokemon Go, have shot like way the yeah. fuck up. Like They're actually doing like really well right now. Yeah, because Pokemon. Yeah. But everyone knows that. Yeah. But anyway, this thing... The classic NES is back, and it's tiny and adorable. Oh, my God. It's fucking, like, handheld. Why don't you read that for us, Bones? It's palm size. Oh, my God. Nintendo's best-selling console from the 80s is making a surprising comeback with the launch of a brand-new console. The palm size mini Nintendo Entertainment System NES Classic Edition costs $60 and comes with 30 classic games pre-installed, including The Legend of Zelda, Punch-Out!, Kid Icarus, Metroid, Final Fantasy, Castlevania, and Donkey Kong. Like the games re-released via Nintendo's virtual console these games will support multiple save save states additionally the new mini nes controller can be plugged into a wii remote controller allowing players who own nes virtual console games on the wii and wii u to play with the nes controller for added authenticity according to polygon a second controller will be available to purchase for 9.99 allowing a second player to jump into games with multiplayer functionality the full list of games that come packed with the console. Balloon Fight, Bubble Bobble, Castlevania, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Double Dragon 2, Dr. Mario, Excite Bike, Final Fantasy, Galaga, is that how you say that? Galaga. Galaga? Ghosts and Goblins, Gradius, Ice Climber, Kid Icarus, Kirby's Adventure, Mario Bros, Mega Man 2, Metroid, Ninja Gaiden, Pac-Man, Punch-Out! featuring Dr. Mr. Dream, Star Tropics, Super C, Super Mario Bros, Super Mario Bros 2, Super Mario Bros 3, Tecmo Bowl, The Legend of Zelda, and Zelda 2 Adventure of Link. The Mini NES Classic Edition arrives in stores on November 11th. We need to get that. I want Holy that. Holy fuck. It's so cute. It fits in the palm of your hand. We need to get that. That is adorable. Like, n not only is it tiny and cute and adorable, but it comes with a fuck ton of games. And a fuck ton of games that we didn't actually have We didn't for actually the original have, Nintendo. yeah. We only had, like, fucking, like, four Are games. they going to make, like, replica cartridges for it? I don't... Th so, those come pre-installed. Yeah, I know, but it, it, it will there actually be, like, a cartridge slot and they'll, like, release, like, mini cartridges for it? I or... don't think so. I think you're going to buy it and it's just going to come pre-installed with those games and that's it. And that's it and you can't yeah. add any more, like, you can't download them or... I don't know. But you can use the... Unless it could connect to the, the eShop and you could... I, probably not, but you can use that controller with your Wii U. Yeah. To play uh, classic Nintendo games on the and virtual is, console. Is this going to be via HDMI output or? Probably. It's cute and adorable and I want it. Yeah, me too. And uh, it's only $60. Only $60 and $10 for a controller. I know. So Well, I, no, I that's want... for an additional controller because you do get a controller with the Yeah, I know. Console. But like controllers yeah. are 10 bucks compared to fucking uh, any other controller. A bajillion dollars for a fucking GameCube controller. Yeah. I'm so mad. <laughs> But yeah, that's awesome. That's so cute. It's adorable. Oh my god. And it has it. a bunch of games. Yeah. Like, it has a lot of, like, the classic NES games you would think of if you thought of NES. Like, Mario, it has all the fucking Mario Bros. It has Zelda, I wonder Kirby. which version of Mario 2, though. I Probably the American. The American or the <sighs> Japanese version? Probably Doki Doki Mario. Oh. Possibly lost levels. We have lost levels. So who I cares? know. I like lost levels, but you know what? I really enjoyed Doki Doki Mario. Yeah, it was pretty good. A lot of people shit on that game for no reason. Oh, I loved that one. That was awesome. Yeah, it has. We have that in All Stars for the yeah. uh, Super Nintendo. But it has Castlevania, Donkey Kong, Doctor Mario, Ghosts and Goblins, Kirby, Mega Man, Ninja Gaiden, Metroid. Shit. It, ha it has. We need to get that. I want it's it. So final verdict. I want it. I want it. Go buy it. Here's my money. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now that we right, sounded moving, like dying Moving cows. on. Uh, one more story before we get to our Microsoft plethora of news. Uh, we have a story from Sony 
uh, as reported by EGM, did GameStop CEO leak the PS4 Neo launch window? Let's find out. According to the article, GameStop CEO Paul Rains may have recently let slip when the PlayStation 4 Neo is coming to stores. While featured as a guest on CNBC Today, Rains mentioned the releases of the Xbox One S and the PlayStation 4 Neo after responding to a question about Nintendo's NX. The Xbox One Slim has been confirmed to be out by holiday 2016, which we'll get to that in a minute. Right. But while the PS4 Neo does not currently have an official release window, the manner in which Reigns talked about them could indicate the systems may launch in tandem. Yes, there will be a new Nintendo console launch in May March 2017, Reigns said. But remember, there are two different form factors, a PlayStation 4 Neo and an Xbox One new slim version. So there will be some activity and upgrades along with the VR. GameSpot followed up with GameSpot's PR regarding the comment but they denied that Reigns made any such suggestion, instead claiming that he was speaking broadly. Paul did not say that the Xbox One S and PlayStation Neo hardware units would be coming out for the holidays. The anchor was the one who referenced the holiday period. Paul simply reminded him that there would be hardware upgrades coming, Xbox One S and PlayStation Neo. He did not give a reference as to the timing on when they would be launching. While neither GameStop nor Sony has yet been willing to confirm when the PlayStation 4 Neo may launch, recent leaks have proposed that the new PlayStation system will be out before the end of the year. So, what do you think? Seeing as how the uh, S, the Xbox One S, comes out in a few weeks, when do you think this will come out? Like, November? Maybe? I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. I think November would probably be a good launch because the PS4 came out in November and it would be perfect time for the holidays. So. Yeah, and I mean the... Uh... I don't know, they kind of got to compete, right? Yeah. Plus, they've got all their VR crap, like, starting. The VR stuff's coming out in October, yeah. so... So, I think they would need to get on it. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe the Neo will come out around the same time as the VR, just yeah. to, like, coincide with it. I think, like, the smart thing to do would probably be to launch them together, and then, like, people who are buying VR should pick up PlayStation Neo. Or, if they don't release them at the same time, maybe the Neo comes out, like, a week or two after yeah. the VR. Just ar around the same time frame, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. The latest... I can see them totally doing package deals, though, with yeah. VR mm -hmm. and the Neo. The latest I would see would probably be November, though. Yeah, I mean, it would coincide with the holiday season. You're going to get a lot of sales, mm -hmm. um, especially for the VR stuff. And, yeah. you know. Yeah. Ah. But um, they still haven't really said anything about it. They just said, hey. No, I know. We haven't heard, like, real. anything about it. So. It's, uh, oh, that sounds fucking familiar, Nintendo. I know, right? But yeah, they just said, hey, it's it's coming some point. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to say end of October, early November, probably. Yeah, holidays. Anyway, um, moving on to our last few stories, all about fucking Microsoft. Let's just pump these out real quick. Um, they officially confirmed a release date for the Xbox One S. Yes, they did. Launch day confirmed. Microsoft has announced the recently announced 2TB Xbox One S launch edition will be available for purchase from October 2nd, 2016. Availability is limited and demand is high, so you'll want to check your local retailer and more information and pre-order your console soon. The Xbox One S is 40% smaller than the currently available Xbox One console and comes with a built-in uh, power supply. Uh, the Xbox One S is the first and only console that allows users to watch Blu-ray movies and stream video in 4K Ultra HD with HDR. Shit. Uh, it comes with a bundled, improved Xbox One wireless controller, uh, improved wireless signal, featured grip, and Bluetooth support. The, con the controller will be available on August 2nd as well for a standalone purchase of $60. Microsoft will be releasing the 1 terabyte and 500 gig versions of the S for $349 and $300 respectively. However, no release dates for that are announced. Bones, what do you think? It comes out in like two weeks. I already closed the window. Oh, I thought you said October the first time. No. And I was like, wait, what? I'm confused. I thought it was coming out in August. I said August 2nd. I was pretty sure you said October. It comes October. out the same day as Batman. I was pretty sure you said October, and so I got you confused. Can, so you can buy your Xbox One S and then buy Telltale's Batman on oh, the same God. fucking day. Um, what do you think? I don't know. Are they releasing their new, their other one this year, too, or no, next year? No, next year. Next year. 
I don't know. I think it'll bring in a lot of the people um, who were holding off on mm-hmm. buying an Xbox yeah. One because they were still on a 360, but 360 is... 360's uh, done now. Yeah, they've cut off support for it. Well, they're still supporting the games, but yeah, they, yeah they're, they're not producing any new consoles. They're not producing any new consoles, so um, I, are... think, I think it'll draw in a lot of the audience that um, was holding off on buying an Xbox a One. A lot of the people that were weary. Yeah, especially yeah. because um, it's going to be updated hardware... Um, 4K resolution. 4K resolution support, um, updated controller, built-in power VR supply. Support. Like, it's going to be a more yeah. powerful console. It's going to be a smaller console. Because the Xbox is kind of a brick. It's kind of, it's, it's a VCR. It's kind of a brick. It's a VCR. So, um, I think it'll draw in a lot more. Especially since, um... Yeah, they're they're stopping production. Well, mm-hmm. they stopped production on the 360s. Yeah. Um, which means they're not going to be supporting the hardware anymore. No. So I think that'll draw in a lot more uh, people who were holding off on it. Yeah. Uh, or people who bought the the PS4 first or whatever. Yeah, people Just, who weren't willing to upgrade yeah, right away. So I think, and I'm pretty sure it's a pretty decent price. Yeah, it's like three hundred, yeah, four hundred dollars for the two bad. terabyte. That's not bad. Yeah. I think it's four hundred for the two terabyte. Yeah, and then the that's not bad considering the Xbox One originally launched for like five hundred dollars, and it was five hundred gigs. Yeah, yeah. So that's but not bad. But they said they said the 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 one terabyte will be three fifty, and then the five hundred will be three hundred. They're releasing three different versions with smaller hard uh, drives. That's not bad. That's pretty good actually. I wouldn't mind getting one of those, but I mean we already have we already one. have one. But plus I have a two terabyte fucking yeah. External. But most of our games are on that. So. Yeah. No, but I mean, like, if I was sitting on the fence still with a 360, I would probably go pick one of those. Yeah. Out. It's the perfect time to upgrade, too. Yeah, exactly. Seeing as how they're they're moving away from the previous generation. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You can't really get any new games on a 360 or PS3 anymore, so. No, and I mean, like, when's the last be... time you, like, you seriously went on the 360 to do anything? Like it's been a while yeah. for me. I don't think I've picked up the 360 in a while. So yeah, now that the now that this is coming out and then the the new PS4 is coming out perfect by the end of the year, time to upgrade. perfect time to upgrade because there's no going back at this point. Right. So August second in a few weeks actually. Yeah. Like two weeks. Plus, I liked what um, Microsoft was doing. Like all their Xbox One like family of consoles mm-hmm. are going to be like obviously some like. The S some, and the... Some will be more powerful than others, the, but uh, all the games will work. Exactly. I liked what they're doing. They have, like, a family yeah, of I, consoles, and it sounded like they're going to have these for a while, and they're just going to be upgrading as they go, yeah, and, and it's I not heard, going um, to be, like, a new console war ever. I heard that, like, yeah, there's going to be three different consoles, obviously, each more powerful than yeah. the last, but all the games will be supported on all the consoles, and the way that works is... Um, when the when Project Scorpio comes out, basically all games from that point on will be developed for that to output in 4K and have the best graphics possible. And then if you play it on the S or the original, right, it's just gonna it'll auto it'll, detect. It'll auto detect and then downscale it to that resolution. Yeah. So if you're playing on the original Xbox One, it'll just be 1080p, but it won't be I, 4K. I like that. But it'll because, still work. Yeah, I like that because now they've got like a family of consoles. Like you can get the cheaper one or you can get the more expensive one. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. You're all going to be playing the same games at the same time. Yeah. So I like that. Yeah, I like, I like that it. they're going in that direction instead of, uh, and they've got like an option for every kind of person, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So moving on. Uh, speaking of Microsoft, uh, Microsoft is going to have a pretty big presence at GamesCon, and they have shared what exactly they'll be doing at GamesCon. Um, as EGM states, Microsoft has shared its plans for this year's GamesCon uh, event in Cologne, Germany. Germany. <laughs> Germany. Germany. The company revealed that attendees will be able to get hands-on time with some of 2016 and 2017's biggest Microsoft games, including Gears of War 4, Forza Horizon 3, Halo Wars 2, ReCore, Sea of Thieves, We Happy Few, Everspace, and Cuphead. Microsoft also revealed that it will not be holding a press conference at GamesCon. Cool. Instead, it will be holding a new Xbox Fan Fest experience. Details will be sh- shared closer to the event. And then they go on about how they had a great E3. Everyone was super excited about what they unveiled. They were really happy with how things went. Uh, our E3 announcement showed Xbox's commitment to offering gaming gamers a future that goes beyond console generations and one that offers them the choice and freedom to play the games they want with the people they want and on the devices they want. At Gamescom, we are excited to bring even more of these experiences into the hands of our fans. Gamescom has always been one of our favorite shows and we are excited to attend and spend time with everyone there. 
Presumably, we will hear more about the Xbox One S at the event, and maybe even some hints about Project Scorpio. Cool. The big thing that I noticed there is that they're not having a press conference at Gamescom. It sounded like they're going to have more of like a hands-on kind of thing. Yeah, it's just going to be they're going to yeah. just going to have a presence on the show floor with a bunch of demos. But they're well, not. Well, it sounded like well, they something about that like X Con or Xbox like fan festival thing. Yeah, the fan um, fest. It just sounded like they're going to be on the floor with people showing off hardware, games, whatever, mm-hmm. instead of just like standing up on stage for an hour and talking about yeah. it. Yeah. Because they had one last year. Yeah. Because last year at E3 there were a lot of big games missing from E3 mm-hmm. like there was no crackdown, there was no scale bound, there was no quantum break. Uh what they ended up doing was saving them for Gamescom when mm-hmm. they had their conference there and that's when they showed them off. But this year they're not going to have a conference, so they're just going to have a bunch of fucking games on the show floor and they're going to be like, "Hey, go play our shit." Yeah, I think that's going to be pretty cool for especially for people that are there. Mm-hmm. You know, get yeah. more of a hands-on thing rather than sitting in an auditorium for an hour. I was hour. excited to see a conference at Gamescom, but Oh, well, what are you gonna I do? don't know. I think I'd, like, especially if I was there, not so much that I'm here, but I'd rather see that than, yeah. you know, at least, like, people are getting, like, hands-on with these games that mm-hmm. are going to be coming out in the next little while. Speaking of which, uh, remember E3 this year, how Crackdown was also mis- mysteriously absent? Yes. Um, Microsoft has explained why Crackdown 3 was delayed. Ooh. Uh, as EGM states... Microsoft recently announced that Crackdown 3 had been pushed out of 2016, and it missed its annual E3 press conference. Turns out the reason why is due to its campaign not being ready. Speaking to Game Informer, Microsoft Studios General Manager Shannon Loftus uh, explained that the online portion of the game was going well, but it was taking longer than expected to get the campaign together. Development has been going incredibly well. I've actually been playing a ton of it, he said. To be honest, because we obviously have this Crackdown Online mode, and then we also have the traditional Crackdown campaign, which has multiplayer online, but we want to launch our online beta so that it's not too far in advance of the complete campaign. It's actually the campaign that we're doubling down on now. We've got internal PlayStations every week for Crackdown Online. We're starting now to get the campaign in. Building these open world games is both challenging and a blast because you have to build all the systems that interact together. Before you get to the point where you can actually experience what the game feels like and you can start building your missions and telling your stories. Uh, but, 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 it's just like, it, it, it's just starting to come online. We have lots of time to put our missions together. Uh, I don't like letting gamers down and asking them to wait, but I'm also kind of proud of giving developers the time they need. However, speaking on the TXR podcast, Xbox marketing manager Aaron Greenberg stated that Microsoft simply didn't need Crackdown 3 this year due to the amount of AAA titles it already has lined up for the holiday season. We don't need the game this year. We've got ReCore, Forza Horizon 3, Gears of War 4, Dead Rising 4, just on the stuff we're uh, publishing before you get to all those great third-party titles. We have a great partnership with EA around Madden, around Battlefield, We've been more thoughtful about spreading out our titles over the next year, not cramming them all into the holiday. Giving people time to play games, to have time and money to be able to buy the next game. When we look at that time of win- window time, window of time, time window, time of legends, we're sure we didn't need another big triple A game, and so we'd rather give the t- team time to bring out something next year. Uh, last month, Microsoft confirmed that Crackdown 3 will support Xbox Play Anywhere. A uh, new program that offers cross-play, cross-buy, and cross-save functionality between X- uh, Xbox One and Windows 10. It is due to release sometime in 2017. So, technically there's two reasons. A, they're not done the fucking game yet. And B, they don't need the fucking game yet. Well, I mean, it's it's kind of like a nice way of saying, you know, we're going to give them a little bit of time to finish it up and whatever. Like, I think... And especially, like, with developing games and trying to, like, push them out, I think they've all started to learn their lesson about, like, forcing games out for the holiday that are broken or not working well or whatever. (laughs) Sonic 06. Sonic. Um, So I think that's... I think it's good. Yeah. I, obviously, I don't know. Like, I don't care obviously if they they're, it. Obviously, they're not done with the game. And obviously, like, Microsoft is not forcing them to publish yeah. a game that's going to be broken in time for the holiday season. Yeah. Plus the fact that, yeah, they did there is, announce a lot of... There is a lot coming out this yeah, year. Yeah, there's a lot of big games there's coming Record, out There's Record, Gears 4, Forza. I wouldn't be upset if they I'm not upset. didn't publish till next year. Like, sure, sure, like... I was I was really excited when they announced this game because I'm a big fan of Crackdown, and 
you know, they announced it and then they didn't really show anything of it for the next few years. I'm like, Okay, what's what's going on with this game? And then this year, I was expecting to see something, but then when they said it got pushed back again, I was like, okay, I'm kind of disappointed that I'm not going to see anything, but you know, if it means more time to make the game finished, then by all means. Yeah, and obviously, you know, it's not finished yet. Yeah, because they're just starting the campaign. Because they've, they, they've been... When they announced it, they said, like, the, the main system they've been really working with was the online stuff. Mm-hmm. Because they said that it's going to be like a huge, completely destructible open world that you can play online with people. Yeah. And they said that um, the physics engine runs through the cloud. And that's how oh. they can do such high destructibility. Oh. Because they're running everything through a cloud service. Oh. So... I didn't know yeah, that. so they've been they've been they've been working a lot on making sure that actually works, and just now they're getting around to like polishing the campaign and making sure that's an actual, you know, legitimate part of the game. Mm-hmm. So 2017, I don't mind waiting. Yeah, but also they're they're you know they're right. There is a lot of big games coming. Yeah, out and obviously year. like Microsoft isn't trying to push people to get their games out faster mm-hmm. in time for the holiday season. They obviously like understand that, yeah. you know. Developers need time to make games as yeah. good as they possibly can be. And there's a lot of stuff that was announced a couple years ago that's finally coming out this season. So, yeah. 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 It seems like a lot of developers nowadays don't exactly realize that they probably should take as much time as they need. Ubisoft. <sighs> Assassin's Creed. Anyway. Anywho. Uh, that was the last uh, news story for today. Yeah. It was uh, quite jam-packed with a lot of good stuff. Like a uh, mini NES and some I want Microsoft one. stuff, and uh, the you I know, want a mini NES. And you know, oh, I'm Batman. I want to um, hold an NES in my palm, and then hook it up to your and TV. look how cute it is. <laughs> I can picture it right now in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, anything else you want to discuss before we wrap things up here? All right, thank you very much for watching. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap things up here. So thank you very much for tuning in and listening to another episode of the Beer Banter Podcast. If you like what you've seen, you can subscribe to BGN on YouTube for podcasts, Let's Plays, live streams, vlogs, unboxings, reviews soon, I promise. Uh, more gaming shit. We don't even vlog. Uh, sometimes we do, every now and then. It's, it's a rare occasion. Very rare occasions. We don't vlog. Subscribe to BGM for uh, great gaming content on YouTube. And if you like what you've seen here, you can uh, tune in next Wednesday for another episode of the Beer Banter Podcast. We have an episode of the podcast every single Wednesday, except for when Bones doesn't want to cooperate with me. You jerk. Ah! And with that said, we will wrap things up here. So thank you very much for watching. I've been your host, The Beer One. With me has been my co-host, Bones. And she has turned into a dinosaur. We'll see you next week. Keep on gaming. <coughs> that hurt. <coughs> Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do my best one. Okay. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> oh god. Alright, we'll see you next week. Ah! <laughs>